Hello. I'm going to start by showing you this map of the Hormuz area. There's Egypt, Israel, Iraq, and here's the Arabian Peninsula. On the other side, here's Iran, and between them, the Persian Gulf. You see this choke point, it's only 15 miles wide, and the Gulf, well, the states on the Arabian Peninsula have always been terrified of Iran closing that choke point down to their shipping. Likewise, Iran has always worried about keeping the lane clear for its own ships, so they're both afraid of each other. Up to now, the Arab states have been quite well protected, mostly by the American Navy. But they're getting increasingly nervous about that. First of all, because they know America needs their oil less and less. Uh, but especially because Iran, with all its economic problems and corruption at home, from which it wishes to distract its populace, is not so, Iran isn't so reticent about causing trouble abroad anymore. So, there are two oil tankers on fire in the Persian Gulf, at least they were a couple of hours ago when I last looked. The first headlines I saw were these from the Metro, which is a free newspaper you can pick up in London at any underground station. And it was this with the shrieking headline, oil tankers blown up after being torpedoed off the coast of Oman. Now, I'm not a nautical engineer, nor any sort of an engineer, actually, but I know enough about torpedoes to understand that a good deal of their destructive power does not come from the explosives they carry in the warhead, but from good old inertia. The torpedo generates a powerful shockwave ahead of itself, which wouldn't need an explosive to penetrate the hull of a ship. And then, once in, the explosives do the rest, and those boats would be on the bottom of the sea in very short order if they had been torpedoed. So I was more than satisfied when I saw this video, which shows a group of men, which American surveillance says is an Iranian Coast Guard vessel, and they were removing something from one of the stricken ships. The Americans say it's a limpet mine that failed to go off. And that strikes me as probably the truth, because the ships are still afloat. Assuming that they're relatively new, they would have double hulls and co compartmentalised oil stores. I think the Exxon Valdez disaster gave ship designers the impetus to design vessels that wouldn't create such a complete chaos again, in, uh, you know, if the hull was breached. In the event that you haven't heard of the Exxon Valdez, it was a very large tanker which ran aground on a reef and then spilt about 11 million gallons of oil into Alaskan waters. Then, as if God were trying to tell us something, there was a storm. The pollution spread as far as 1,300 miles, and the immediate 200 miles were pretty well poisoned to destruction. OK, well, nothing like that happened on these two ships. And as I said, they were still afloat when I last heard of them, and that seems to me to be the signature of limpet mines, which just blew the outer hull, but didn't have the, the impetus to get through the second hull. Of course, the second hull could collapse now under pressure, but, well, watch this space. So, why am I talking about it? Well, it was those men in the boat that caught my imagination. You see, an unexploded limpet mine isn't like a dead TV set. It's a bomb. The fact that it hasn't gone off doesn't cancel out the fact that it's loaded with high explosives. The possibility that the timer isn't working properly, because these things are usually worked on timers, 
The possibility that the timer is faulty doesn't cancel out the possibility that it'll start working just when you've got it off the side of the ship. So why did an Iranian bomb squad go out there? I might say it was in broad daylight, knowing they'd be seen, and so giving the game away about the culprit, and handling a bomb which could go off and blow the entire boat and its crew into the heaven of the martyrs. As soon as I heard about the mine retrieval episode, I could think of nothing else. What was so important about that mine that they had to go out there, be seen, risk being shot at, and retrieve it? Well, the only thing I can think of is that it had been made somewhere not in Iran, like China, perhaps, or North Korea. And one of those countries would find it very embarrassing if one of their pieces of kit had been found being used against two ships that just happened to be taking oil to Japan, a major American ally. And (coughs) straight after the Japanese Prime Minister, Shinzo Abe, had been to Iran to try to mediate to cool the little problem in the Straits of Hormuz between the United States and the Islamic Republic of Iran. You see, America has been blockading Iranian shipping for a couple of weeks now. Iran sells oil to China. By blockading Iranian shipping in the Gulf of Oman, America was not only denying Iran the income, at a time when Iran is busy looking down the back of the sofa for loose change, but it is also putting pressure on China. There's a bit of a problem with China as well, isn't there? You know, the trade deal thing. So my bet is that that limpet mine is Chinese. I'm not saying they sold the mines just for the purpose of getting at those two ships. It's possible, but it's equally likely that they've been in the Iranian arsenal for months or years. But when Iran wanted to show America that it could damage American interests in the Persian Gulf and at the same time make life difficult for American allies, and then it turns out that one of the mines uh, had failed to blow, they had no choice but to send a suicide squad out there to retrieve the evidence. So that's my reading of it anyway. I think this whole business is involving a lot more countries than we've been given to believe. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. And if you wish to donate, click the subscribe star link where you can make a one-off payment or set up a regular contribution, or I have a PayPal account at grannyopteryx at gmail.com. Till next time.